Every head be bow, every eyes be closed. Father God, show us where you work in and allow us to join you there. Let this congregation not see jazz, but let them see Jesus. Let them not hear jazz, but let them hear Jesus. And when all is said and done, we thank you that your name will be glorified. We know that your people will be edified, and the very devil will be horrified. Because we ask it in the precious, the powerful, the permanent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And the people of God who believe that you're walking, talking, breathing, miracle, give the Lord a hand of praise in this place. I'm honored to be here on tonight, and there is a word from the Lord. It is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 15, reading particularly at verse number 21. And here begins the reading of the word of God. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, my daughter is demon possessed but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and urged him saying send her away cause she cries out after us but he answered and said I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel then she came and worshiped him saying Lord help me but he answered and said it is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the little dogs and and she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which falls from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed that very hour. I want to pause particularly at verse number 25 in the time that I have, and it reads, Then she came and worship him saying Lord help me then she came and worship him saying Lord help me in the time that I have I want to put a tag on that verse and I want to preach from the subject help for the helpless I want to preach from the subject help from the helpless my brothers and sisters in Christ in creation our biblical text on tonight introduces us to a Canaanite woman who finds herself in Christ is chaos and confusion. Uh, she finds herself in crisis, chaos and confusion uh, because her beloved daughter is not acting right. Uh, her beloved daughter is not doing right. Her loved daughter is not behaving the way she should. Uh, this woman comes to Jesus for help because she finds herself uh, in crisis, chaos and confusion. Uh, and all of us at the sound of my voice knows what it is uh, to find yourself in some form of crisis, chaos and confusion. Uh, where you find yourself between the devil and the deep blue sea uh, and you find yourself between a rock and a hard place uh, Jesus is traveling preaching the gospel and the Bible says out of nowhere comes a woman who has triple jeopardy uh, on one hand she's got crisis uh, on the other hand she's got chaos uh, and behind her she's got confusion uh, she finds herself between crisis chaos and confusion uh, because her daughter is not doing right her daughter is not living right her daughter is not behaving the way that this woman expect her daughter to be and you can understand the dilemma that this mother finds herself in she expect her daughter to be always doing right she expect her daughter to always be living right but she finds herself in crisis chaos and confusion she is in a desperate situation and because she's in a desperate situation she presses her way in the presence of Jesus Jesus and she's not asking Jesus for cash she's not asking Jesus for a crib she's not asking Jesus for clothes she's asking Jesus to help her out because her only child has lost her mind you can understand how this woman must be feeling her heart is broken because her child has find herself in a predicament that the mother has never thought or planned somebody over the airways you know what this mother feels like you didn't show up tonight because you're asking for a car you're not asking for cash or you're not asking for a crib your prayer is God I need you to do something with my child because my child is acting like she lost her mind my son is acting like he ain't got no sense you came tonight because you believe in God to do something 
not in terms of your finance, uh, but in terms of your family. Uh, she gets in the presence of Jesus, uh, and I call her a desperate housewife. Uh, I know she's desperate because of the simplicity of her prayer. Uh, because whenever you are in crisis, chaos, and confusion, uh, you ain't got no time for no long, drawn-out prayer. Uh, whenever you find yourself between the devil and the deep blue sea, uh, whenever you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, uh, you ain't got time for 15 minutes prayer. You can always tell people who ain't got crisis, chaos, and confusion uh, because it takes a long time uh, for them to get their prayer requests out. Uh, but when you find yourself in crisis, chaos, and confusion, uh, you get straight to the point. Uh, Jesus, thou son of David, uh, I need you to have mercy on me. Uh, don't miss this woman's prayer request. Uh, she's asking Jesus uh, to have mercy on her, uh, but the issue is with her child. Uh, she's asking Jesus to have mercy on her uh, but it's her child that is not behaving right uh, and the implication that she's asking Jesus uh, to have mercy on her uh, is because the mother is blaming herself uh, she's playing the blaming game you know what it is uh, she's blaming herself uh, for her child's predicament uh, and how many of us have blamed ourselves uh, for other people's predicament uh, we said if I was a better wife he wouldn't have walked out on me uh, if I was a better husband she would have never walked out on me. If I was a better employee, I wouldn't have lost my job. How many of us have a tendency of blaming ourselves for other predicament? But what we fail to understand is there's something called free will, which means that people make choices. It doesn't matter how gifted or anointed you are. People do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. And you've got to make up your mind. You ain't going to let nobody in 2014 uh, blame you for their predicament uh, the only reason why people blame you uh, is because they fail to look in the mirror uh, and do our own self check uh, but whenever they look in the mirror uh, and check themselves out uh, they can't blame nobody uh, in fact in 2014 I am declaring uh, that the way God is about to bless you uh, you can't even blame your haters on it uh, you can't say because the devil been messing with me uh, God is going to open such doors in your life uh, that when you look at the stuff that God brought you out of uh, and the stuff that God brought you through, uh, the only person you can give glory to uh, is God. Uh, she comes to Jesus uh, because she is in a desperate situation. Uh, I know she's desperate uh, because of the simplicity of her prayer. Uh, because whenever you're desperate, uh, you ain't got time for no long drawn out prayer. You get straight to the point. Uh, would you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, you sitting next to somebody desperate tonight. Uh, I can always tell when I'm sitting next to somebody desperate uh, because you don't care if your mascara run. Uh, you don't care if there's a run in your stocking. Uh, you don't care if your tie is crooked uh, because you didn't come to see who's zooming who. Uh, you came to give God some praise uh, because there's something you have left at home uh, that is not doing right by you. Uh, can I ask a question as I go further in the sermon? Uh, what have you left at home that is not doing right by you? What have you left at your job that is not doing right by you? And I declare and decree, if you can shout in this house, God will leave this house and get to your house. So by the time you get to your house, he will handle your business. I need about a hundred people over here who said, I'm believing God that by the time I get back to my house, by the time I get back to my job, the Lord will already work it out. She comes in desperation. I know she's desperate because of the simplicity of her prayer. Jesus, thou son of David, I need you to have mercy on me because my daughter is not doing right. And the Bible says that Jesus answers her not a word. Don't miss that. I'm a Bible preacher. She comes in desperation, but she meets a disinterest savior. She comes in desperation, uh, but she meets a disinterest savior. Uh, he answers her, not a word. Uh, zip, zero, not a word. Uh, now that bothers me. Uh, and can I tell you why that bothers me? Uh, it's because I know who he is. Uh, John told me he is the word. Uh, John said in the beginning was the word. Uh, and the word was with God. Uh, and the word become flesh. Uh, but what do you do uh, when the one who is the word uh, can't even give you a word in your situation? 
situation. What do you do when you're expecting a word and you show up for a word and you can't get a word? What do you do when the word bearer and the word giver and the originator of the word doesn't give you a word? He dissed her in her desperation. And so I asked Jesus, why would you diss the sister in her desperation? And Jesus said, Jairus, the reason why I had to diss her in her desperation is because I'm not moved by desperation. Oh God, somebody got to catch it. He said, the reason why I had to diss her in her desperation is because I'm not moved by desperation. Now right here you can shout because sometime in desperation you make deadly choices and that's why every now and again you ought to thank God not for the yes but you ought to thank God for the no. You ought to thank God not for the doors he opened but you ought to thank God for the doors he closed. I'm so glad he did not answer me in my desperation because what I wanted might have been good to me but not good for me. Is there anybody in here who thank God that he didn't answer you in your desperation? He's not moved, he's not moved, he's not moved, he's not moved by my desperation because sometimes in my desperation I make deadly decision. In my desperation I marry Ishmael trying to make him Isaac. In my desperation I hook up with Delilah trying to make a Deborah. In my desperation I hook up with people who might have been good to me but not good for me. I need about 500 people over the airway who can shout and say thank God he didn't answer me in my desperation because sometimes in my desperation I make deadly decision he answers her not a word because he's not moved he's not moved by desperation and the sign that you're spiritually mature is when you can shout not over his yes but over his no the time when you know you ought to shout is not just for the doors he opened, but also for the doors he closed. She comes in crisis, chaos, and confusion. She's a desperate sister, but she meets a disinterest savior. He answers her not a word. In the words of the young people, he said, tell it to my hands, because my ears won't hear it. He diss her in her desperation. What do you do with a disinterest savior? It's one thing to be be dissed by a bishop. It's one thing to be dissed by a preacher. But what do you do when you've been dissed by Jesus? What do you do when he blesses everybody but you? What do you do when he opens the door for everybody but you? I love this sister because even in a desperate desperation and meeting a disinterest savior, she was not moved. The Bible says even while he does not pay her any attention, she stays stay right there and she believed God to do something for her child would you pull your neighbor by the hand and say you giving up too soon come on you throwing in the towel too soon you walking away too soon if you just hold on just a little while longer he may not come when you want him but he's always on time. She comes in desperation. She meets a disinterest savior because he's not moved by desperation. But the text says that while he does not say anything to her, the disciples approach him and say, Lord, would you please send her away because she's bothering us. Would you please send her away because she's driving us crazy did y'all read that in the text did y'all see what the disciples say Lord would you please send her away because she's bothering us if you read that you know the disciples are lying on her because last time we checked her out she never even included them in her prayer request she simply said Jesus singular son of David singular have mercy on me singular and yet the disciples says Lord would you send her away because she is bothering us. I call these disciples some deluded saints. She comes in desperation. She meets a disinterest savior and now she got to deal with some deluded saints. Lord, would you send her away because she's bothering us? Where did they come with us from? She never even holler at them. 
She never even looked their way. That's what you get when the usher sits you next to some deluded saints. You know what deluded saints are? When you start breaking out in a shout, they say it don't take all that. When you start hollering, they say why you hollering so loud? When you start waving your hand, they start fanning you down. But if they knew what you had to go through to get where you are today, they'll understand your praise. In fact, you ought to touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, until you know my story, you ain't going to understand my shout. So I ain't got time to explain my story. Just watch my shout. I've got the shot I have because I've got a story. She's got to deal with some deluded saints. Lord, would you please send her away because she's bothering. She's driving us crazy. Would you lean forward? Come close to the television. I got to tell you a secret. Your praise is no good until it bothers somebody. Okay, y'all missed it. I said it again. I said your praise is no good until it bothers somebody. You want to know if you got a devil on your pew? Just open your mouth and if they don't holler back at you, you know you got a praise hater and not a praise giver because your praise is no good until it bothers. Come on, ask your neighbor, say, is my praise bothering you? Is my shout bothering you? Is my dance bothering you? Get an answer, get an answer. If they say no, open your mouth and holler at them and say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. She comes in desperation. She meets her disinterest savior. She's got to deal with some deluded saints. Don't miss that. She comes, it's a desperate sister who meets a disinterest savior who now have to deal with some deluded saints. Lord, would you please send her away because she's bothering us. She's driving us crazy. She's plucking our last nerve. Don't she know we don't holler like this? Don't she know we don't shout like this? Don't she know that we don't praise him like like this, Lord, but you please send her away because she's bothering us. But after she's got to deal with a disinterest savior and some deluded saints, he finally answers her. Don't miss that. He finally gives a word. And he said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. My God, it's getting bad all night long. She comes in desperation. She got to deal with a disinterest savior. She's got to deal with some deluded saints. And then he finds a given answer. And the answer he gives her don't even make no sense. It don't make no sense to her. He gives a theological answer for a practical problem. She just needs him to help the daughter out. And he wants to give her a Sunday school lesson. He want to act like she's trying to get Christology when she's trying to get help. He want to act here what he said. I, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What that got to do with me? What that got to do with my demon-possessed daughter? I just want to know, can you help her sister out? Can you give help for the helpless? And you want to give me a theological dissertation? I was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel. In other words, baby girl, I got email, but it ain't got your name on it. I got a Facebook account, but you're not on Facebook. I got Twitters, but you ain't following me. I got a picture on Instagram, but I didn't send it to you. I got mail, but it ain't got your name. On it. I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this is the difference between winners and losers. Because after that remark from Jesus, most of y'all would have walked away. But the sister girlfriend was more than determined than ever. She turns around and she worship. Okay, y'all miss your cue. She turns around and she worship. The answer he gives her. Doesn't make no sense, but she worship. Okay, y'all miss your cue. Uh, the answer is not the answer she's looking for, but she say thank you, Jesus. Uh, the answer is not the answer she was expecting, but she say you're still holy. The answer is not the answer she was looking for, but she said you're still righteous because her worship is not based on the answer.
answer is based on who he is. I wish I had about somebody in here who said my worship ain't got nothing to do with the clothes, ain't got nothing to do with the car, ain't got nothing to do with the crib. If he doesn't give me another dime, if he doesn't open another door, if he doesn't heal my body, my worship ain't got nothing to do with stuff. It got to do with who he is. He's God all by him. She comes in desperation. She meets a disinterest savior. She's got to deal with some deluded say, And he gives an answer. And the answer doesn't make. I know y'all don't want to be real. But have God ever given you an answer that just don't. You ask him to be tall and you send him short. It don't make no sense. I, I, some things in scripture just don't make no sense. Bless them who despitefully use you. Tell your neighbor that don't make no sense. Uh, he, he said if somebody go a mile and ask you to go the mile, don't just go a mile but go an extra mile. I'm already tired on the first mile and you wanted me to go an extra mile. It just don't make no and this is my favorite one if somebody slap you don't you slap them back just turn the other cheek touch him and say that don't even make any sense but God has a tendency to give us answers that doesn't make sense in the physical realm but it makes sense in the supernatural realm he gives an answer that doesn't make sense and the emphasis is not on his answer the emphasis is on her response to the answer in spite of a nonsense answer she still opened her mouth and she offered up the best praise the text says that she worshiped don't miss that she sets the atmosphere she creates an atmosphere and it's after she worshiped she made her request no don't miss that she worshiped and at the end of worship she said Lord can you help me out in other words can you give help for the helpless she does this after 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 the answer doesn't make sense she worship him and based on her worship he gives an answer and he said it is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dog. I, I asked Jesus, what kind of answer is this? The first answer, it doesn't make any sense. What kind of answer is this? What kind of answer is this after worship? What kind of answer is this after worship? This is after she gave them hallelujah, glory, glory, thank you, Jesus. He gives her an answer that doesn't even make any more sense. Why would he give us such an answer after worship? He gives us such an answer after worship because he wants to teach us. He He's not moved by desperation, uh, but he cannot be manipulated by worship. Uh, oh God, y'all missed it. Uh, I said he cannot uh, be manipulated by worship uh, because too many of us uh, are using worship uh, as a magic one, uh, as a Ouija board, uh, trying to get something from God. Uh, like if God is your historical, uh, or God is your bellhop, uh, God said you got to realize uh, your worship uh, ain't got nothing to do uh, with how much I bless Bless you. Your worship got to do with who he is. In other words, if he doesn't open a door, if he doesn't heal my body, if he doesn't make a way, I still come up in here, open my mouth, and give God some praise. Is there anybody in here at the song of my voice who said, if he never give me another dime, if he never open another door, if he never give me another million dollar, I'll open my mouth and declare who he is. Are there any worshipers? in here who said I praise him in spite of the answer I praise him in spite of the problem he gives an answer that doesn't make sense and she still she still worship well I gotta get out of here she comes in desperation she meets a disinterest savior she gotta deal with some deluded sin because he's not moved by desperation he cannot be manipulated by worship and he finally gives an answer uh, and look at the answer he gives her uh, it is not good uh, to take the children's bread uh, and to 
throw it to the dog. Did y'all see that? No, y'all didn't see that. It is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dog. Did y'all see that? No, y'all didn't see that. Did y'all see what he said? It is not good to take the children's bread and to throw it to the dog. What kind of answer is this after worship? And in the Peterson translation of the Message Bible, Peterson said with such answer, the woman flipped the script on Jesus and she said, you're absolutely right. I don't know why you're tripping. I didn't even ask you for bread. I know I'm not qualified for bread. I know I'm not entitled for bread. I know I was born on the wrong side of the track. I don't know why you're all upset and angry about it. In fact, I didn't ask you for bread. I just want to ask, can you at least help me out? You can keep the bread if you want to. I know I'm not qualified for the bread, but last time I read the doggy Bible, even the dogs have some rights. She said, I may not be qualified for the bread, but at least I'm entitled to the crumbs. She said, Jesus, you can keep the bread, but at least give me the crumbs. And when I read that passage, I asked myself why would the woman settle for crumbs and then it dawned on me you see my mama is from South Carolina and my daddy is from Georgia and my mama had this rule she said we couldn't eat dinner until daddy got home I don't know about anybody but it used to bother me because every day I came home I know what my mama had cooked she had cooked some fried chicken she cooked some macaroni and cheese she made some peach cobbler but I couldn't eat dinner until daddy got home. One Friday I got home with my stomach in my hands. My lips were dry and I said mama I'm on my way to wash my hands so we can eat some dinner and my mama said you can't eat dinner until daddy gets home. I went up to my bedroom and I slammed the door and I said when I move out of here I'm breaking the rules. My mama came in my room and she said Jazz are you upset I said, what do you think? My stomach is in my hands. My lips are dry. I haven't eaten all day. And you won't let me eat dinner. Because daddy is not home. And that's when my mama got the Holy Ghost. And she looked at me. And she said, earlier today, when I made the peach cobbler, I put it in the big dish. But all of it can fit in the big dish. So I put some in the small dish. She said, when I made the macaroni and cheese, all of it can fit in the big dish so I had to put some in the small dish she said when I made the peach cobbler all of it can fit in the big dish so I had to put some in the small dish and so I asked my mama what that got to do with me and she said until daddy get home you can't eat from the big dish but in the meantime while you're waiting on daddy, you can eat from the small dish. Pull your neighbor by the hand like you're about to pull it off. And say, neighbor, if I look this good, eating from the small dish, what you think I'm going to look like when I start eating from the big dish? Pull your neighbor by the hand and say, the clothes I got on, it's just small dish. The car I'm driving, it's just small dish. The house I'm living in, it's just small dish. Dish, but God is about to upgrade me Cause eyes have not seen Ears have not heard It hasn't entered the hearts of men What God has got in store for you So pull your neighbor by the head And say neighbor When you see the devil Let him know For now all I got is crumbs But bread is on its way Miracles is on way. Breakthrough is on its way. Blessing is on its way. Deliverance is on its way. Somebody open your mouth and say, bread is on my way. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed me. Jesus, he's not moved by desperation. He cannot be manipulated by worship but there's something he cannot say no to he's not moved by desperation he cannot be manipulated by worship but there's something in the Peterson translation of the text it said and Jesus looked at her and said woman 
Great is your faith. Whatever you want, an hour from now, it's yours. I wish y'all would read the Bible. He said, whatever, I wish I had a cook up in here. Can somebody look at your watch and just go ahead and fast forward it? And God said, an hour from now, what you're about to shout for right now is going to be manifested an hour from now. I need somebody to open your mouth, throw your head back, and holler in here an hour from now. Minutes from now, he's about to go to your house, open the windows of heaven, and pour you a blessing. An hour from now, is that your best praise? An hour from now, is that your straightest shot? An hour from now, is that your best hallelujah? An hour from now, an hour from now, an hour from now. Hour from now, you in Alabama, you in Mississippi, you who are in Georgia, in South Africa and America. God put me on the Word Network tonight to let you know that there is a miracle that has been assigned to your address. And an hour from now, it is going to accelerate. It is going to meet you at your door. In fact, I want to encourage you right now to expect an hour from now breakthrough. An hour from now blessing. You ain't got to wait till the end of the year. Uh, you ain't got to wait till the end of the month. Uh, in fact, I've come to declare and decree uh, that this year God is moving it faster than ever. Uh, and so I need you to sow a seed uh, for an hour from now miracle. Uh, I need as many as you who can uh, to get right now on this phone uh, and to get on the line right now uh, and call 855 730 and the word. Uh, and I need you to sow a thousand dollars into this ministry. Uh, 855 730 word this is not for a car this is not for clothes it is not for crib it's for your child it's for your daughter it's for your son it's for that child who can't get off of drugs it's for that child who's been in the street it's for that child who have lost his mind but God said an hour from now I don't care what drugs your child is on he's coming off of it he said an hour from now I don't care where your child is you may not know where your child been for the last six months but God said an hour from now they are going to pick up the phone and call you and I need somebody to give God a lay away praise in this place I need somebody to say before I see the manifestation it is going to show up in my house and so I need as many of you to partner with me and the word network 855-730 word and when you sow that seed say it's because God is going to help my child out. How many of y'all need God to help your child out? How many of y'all need God to help your marriage out? How many of y'all need God to help your family out? Our family is struggling, but God told me an hour from now, he's going to turn that family around. I need somebody who believes that he's a God of a turnaround. I need somebody who believes that he's about to do it. I need you to pick up that phone, and I need you to partner with us. 855 zero word and say an hour from now when well, my time is up and I gotta get out of here but I'm not gonna wait an hour from now to get God my praise I praise him now for an hour from now I need somebody who said I'm not gonna wait till I see the manifestation but this shout is for the promotion that is coming my way this shout is for the blessing that is coming my way this shout is for the breakthrough that is coming my way. Somebody open your mouth and scream up in here. I was fun. 